Okay. I'm holding. Yes. Thank you. 
one is it's 977 square feet. I believe that is based on an interior measurement. I'm not sure or convinced that it's entirely accurate. Uh, tax card gives a little higher number at 1125. Uh, and that's based on the outer footprint of the residential part of the building. Um, either way, it is short for 1200. Um, of note, as listed in your packet, is a front porch and a rear porch, each one being about 222 square feet. And, uh, we've had lots of inquiries over the past couple of years, and staff has always pointed that out, saying if you close the porch, there's no need for variance to put you over the 1200 under either scenario. In this case, the prospective buyer does not want to do that, and they are opting to come through the variance process to see if they can be approved in the building as it is, without having to add on or even if it's just in place in the porch. Um, so because of that, um, note in here the average house size is in Bellevue North, a little bit bigger than 1,200 square feet. Um, average is almost twice that. Um, there's no hardship because it was not built as a house originally, so it's not a grandfather and not a new situation. So with that, staff is recommending the lot. However, some interesting wedding circumstances. One, the neighborhood is wanting to convert this to a house. It is part of their private development. Um, they have authorized the applicant to come through this process for exactly that. It's an existing building. It's at the back of the neighborhood. Um, and it fits it well there, as is. Um, there are easements on the property that may add them on a little bit hard. The only logical place really is to go out the back, off to the side. We've had some architects explore that possibility, and that poses a lot of difficulty, um, plus several large trees over there. Um, so if the board feels inclined to approve, I put in the bottom of the last paragraph a recommended condition. Um, this is a minimum. The stipulation be that it be for the existing building only. And the reason for that is if you deem that existing building acceptable and appropriate like it's been for 30 years, but as a residence, then fine. If without that condition, the future owner could then demolish the house and build any structure at that square footage or where it be approved um, without any curve. Um, which means with the condition that it be that building, if that building should go away, and we're back to this regular R15 requirements. So that was that answer the questions you might have. I think we have some neighborhood representatives here. You know a lot more about the history of it than I do. But I think they're eager to talk to you. Any questions? So Matt, you're saying that if either the front porch, what is existing, or the back porch, not the patio, were enclosed, that would give the sufficient square footage needed. Correct. Um, if you do the math and you take the load number at 977, you add 222 to it, you get 1199. Okay. We have this conversation with Alvin. I'm convinced there is inches in there that would make up the square foot difference. Uh, my thought is to show that on the floor plan. So to me, that's the worst case scenario. If the house is actually, or the building is actually 1125 to start with, then that AQ22 puts it way over. Even half of the porch would put it over the 1200 at that point. <laughs> and I'll go ahead and mention, Matt's probably aware of this, but I got an email from the applicant this morning, as did Matt, that the applicant was not, refers not to Al, and that email was provided for you at this point. Any other questions for staff? Pictures of the house and the machine there, but those are all that out to look at. Very convenient. I'll be there multiple times. It's not a good place to turn around in that neighborhood. It's all the way to the end. Parking is a, is a problem, and always had to you make know, house out of it, but you know, you have parking problems. All right. Okay. Thank you. With the applicant or the applicant's representation, we should address the board. I'm neither the applicant, I'm Mary Ballinger. Uh, my address is 3 Bellmead North, Delta Austin. I'm president of the Bellmead North Property Owners Association, so we are the property owners. 
little background information. The purchase contract for this was signed back in September of 2019. The variance application was not a condition of the pur purchase contract. This was brought to us after we signed the contract with Mr. Quarles. We had been anxious to accommodate Mr. Quarles and get gone along with this application, but there have been many delays bringing us six months later to where we are now. The homeowners obviously want to set the clubhouse. And so that's where we stand now. At our home, annual homeowners meeting in December, we addressed this issue and we, the homeowners signed um, this stating that we are the homeowners, we are also the architectural committee, which would have to approve any plans and specifications for an addition to the clubhouse. What we want most is for the properties to remain as is, to appear as is on the exterior. We don't want something that looks very different in a very small area. And basically, I'll pass these comments around. This is all of our homeowners. There are 15 of us, 10 signs, but the five who did not sign it are in agreement with us, but just were not at the meeting. As I said, there have been many delays, and we are most anxious to move forward now. We don't object to what Mr. Quarles proposes, but and we do recognize, as Matt said, many uh, building setbacks, servitudes, and easements. To us, as a homeowners associates, to the country club, utility surveys, building setbacks, there's not a whole lot to add on. Another consideration is that our our street is a private drive that we maintain, and any major addition we fear would cause a lot of damage to our access, and that's and a lot of disturbance to our neighbors, a lot of whom are elderly, and there's been major concern about that. We do want another neighbor. We don't use the clubhouse. It's 30 years old, and it requires a lot of maintenance, so we really want to sell it. We don't have an objection to Mr. Quarles' application, but it's not our application. And I guess that's all I can say, and I'll answer any questions you might have. And I'll go ahead and let Ward know. Mr. Quarles had fully intended to be here. Unfortunately, he had a cottage yesterday when he passed the flu. So he's out. And I will repeat that we very much would like a resolution now. And I'm happy to answer any questions. I don't know if you're at liberty to say this, but in the six months that this has been rocking along, because I noticed there was a for sale sign out there, have y'all still had interest in the clubhouse during that six months? We have, and I have shown it, and I continue to show it, and as I say, it's not sold to it's sold, but I can't commit, and I, just within the last two weeks, I've had someone who has a serious interest in who is waiting for me to tell them the outcome of this and how we're going to follow And they are aware that it needs to be added on to be in compliance. I contacted them after I got the copy of the report to see if they would be willing to close in the back porch, and they indicated yes. If they were to either Mr. Quarles or someone else, were to buy it and make a sunroom, glass window on the back side so it doesn't face the front, would that satisfy the architectural side of it that we didn't enlarge it beyond what was already pretty much on the roof now? I, it, that's already been discussed and it will be accepted. Okay. Thank you. Is there anything else that you need to
Um, is there anybody else here in support of this application that wishes to address the board? Um, is anybody here in opposition to the case that wishes to address the board? No. Tracy, is your office contact? All right. All right. <clears throat> Unless there are any other questions of staff or any, anything else? Somebody like Make a motion. Uh, I make a motion that we grant the variance with the stipulation for that it's for the existing building only. I'm sorry for this. That we grant the variance, but it's for the existing building only. We can't tear it down and make something like that. We have a motion. We have a second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? It is unanimous. No, it's not. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I missed. I'm sorry. Uh, one opposition. <laughs> I, she was leaning forward. I didn't see her. I missed you. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Uh, motion passes. Uh, it is approved. Thank you very much. All right. We will move on to, since there are no other cases, we'll move on to other business. Everybody has in front of them the approval of, uh, I'm sorry, the last meeting minutes. Everybody will take a look at it. I'd like to say we talked a lot the last time. <laughs> a lot of talking last time. Is that why we were talking this time? Yeah. Conservation talk. Makes it easy on Tracy. <laughs> All right. I'll make a motion to approve this presented. We have a motion. We have a second. Second. We have a motion and second. All those in favor? No, uh, we have uh, one, two, three, four, five in favor and one abstain. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. <clears throat> All right, uh, attendance review. I believe the only one that's absent is John. Yeah, I spoke to him yesterday. He said he was going to attend, and I did not. All right, well, um, I guess we'll mark him absent until we find out if there's a reason for next time. Uh, any other business? Any other business? All right, we are adjourned. Thank you very much.